All right, so good morning all. Welcome to February's edition of <clears throat> the State of Vermont's Enterprise GIS Consortium or EGC's uh, Geo Enlightenment series. These are events that we invite folks from not just Vermont, from, but also from elsewhere to give talks on topics that are of interest to all of us. Uh, today's topic will be talking about trailfinder.info, which is a great public resource for understanding recreational trail use across the state of Vermont. And our guests today are Russ Hersler from Upper Valley Trail Alliance and Clara Paulfus from uh, CCGIS, who are both going to go over the, uh, the development and current stages and presumably the future status of trailfinder.info. So I'll turn it over to you, Russ and Claire. Have at it. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for having us. Um, I'm Russell Hirschler. Uh, thanks, Tim and uh, Claire, my colleague up in the Northeast Kingdom. I'm speaking to you from Norwich, Vermont right now. Um, uh, we're just going to jump into it. Uh, Claire and I put together a, a PowerPoint presentation that we'll do our best to present in, in, a, in a good way. It's always a little challenging to do a two-person presentation um, separated by 100 miles and then speaking to all of you online. So maybe one day we'll actually get to see each other in person. Um, and then we'll have a chance to take some questions um we're expecting at least 20 minutes at the end of our presentation to ask questions so you can either um hold it to then or you can put it in the chat and uh, tim will manage those questions as well uh so we're gonna jump right into this um so we're here to talk about trail finder um and sort of how we manage the information and meet the challenges of the digital age I want to just share a little bit about what Trail Finder is, um, why it's unique, where it came from, and, and how we got to where it is today. Trail Finder, um, had the website overall, has been around since 2007, 2008. It was originally envisioned as a public access trails database by the group called Local Motion out of Burlington. And uh, Burlington, uh, sorry, Local Motion had been um, doing their best to map trails in. Um, their corner of Vermont for about a year, like I said, 2007, 2008, before they started opening the uh, project up to a variety of different partners. They uh, initially came to the Upper Valley Trails Alliance, and we're an organization that works both in Vermont and New Hampshire in 40 communities across uh, both sides of the Connecticut River. And we're pretty well wired into um, the trails and information that's going on in our service area. Um, so we were brought in as a partner a few years later. Local Motion gave up their ownership of Trail Finder. The Upper Valley Trails Alliance took it over and um, sought to find a partner that could help um, manage the most, uh, I would say, challenging and important component of um, the Trail Finder website, which is how do we manage the spatial data and how do we provide uh, high quality information to our users? So. Um, Again, Trail Finder is a free online trails database that covers all of Vermont and all of New Hampshire, and we work with a variety of partners. Um, trail Finder is not an open source platform uh, like some of the other uh, platforms that you see out there, like at All Trails, where you can go out, or a Strava, where you can go out, map your uh, bike ride or your hike, and then post it to a website. This is information that has been um, trail manager approved. And we'll go through that process of what it means to uh, have a trail that gets posted onto Trail Finder. Um, so again, that's what one of the reasons that Trail Finder is unique is that it is managed um, by uh, essentially a coalition of partners uh, that work together to promote public access trail information across Vermont, New Hampshire. The Upper Valley Trails Alliance is the uh, fiscal sponsor and sort of the primary outward nonprofit organization that manages the site. We work very closely with the Center for Community GIS, um, uh, Claire and her colleagues who again manage the spatial data and the, um, uh, the, the, the uh, content management system that really that drives the site. Um, and then we have other partners, um, Vermont Forest Parks and Recreation and New Hampshire State Parks. Your University of New Hampshire Cooperative Extension, the National Park Service are some of our um, higher level partners. It's funded through uh, primarily grant funds. We do receive state RTP funds from uh, Vermont FPR and New Hampshire State Parks. And then we've done 
a tremendous amount of both small and large uh, public and private foundations that help um, keep the site free and then pay for our time to go out and develop our partnerships with our trail managers and again go through that process that we'll go over in a little while. Um, our, our, our coalition is quite unique. Um, I've been at the executive director position at the Upper Valley Trails Alliance for almost 15 years, and the work that we do in our Trail Finder Coalition partnership is the most unique partnership that I've uh, ever been involved in. We really are a group of uh, organizations that bring the best of what we do to the table and share those roles and responsibilities. We meet on a monthly basis, um, uh, of course, with Zoom and, and uh, uh, Microsoft Teams, it's uh, easier to meet and um, that's been going very well. And we have our series of challenges and successes that we celebrate and that we commiserate over and then we go back to getting more trails put on Trail Finder. So our goal when we developed Trail Finder, um, and one of the things I neglected to mention was when the year that we started working with CCGIS to develop the site pretty similar to what it looks like right now was in 2014. Um, at that time, it was still mainly a Vermont-based resource. Two years later, we expanded to all of New Hampshire, and then we relaunched the site, Claire, I believe was two years ago um, in its current format uh, uh, with the way that it looks if you went there today. Our goal when we developed Trail Finder is to provide easy, fast, and reliable uh, and centralized access to information about outdoor recreation opportunities. The other thing that's um, interesting about Trail Finder is that it also covers a huge number of different kinds of recreational opportunities. Uh, blue uh, water trails, trail, hiking, hiking trails, trails backcountry back skiing. I think there's 12 or 14 different types of recreational um, opportunities that you can search for. Again, I mentioned our partners earlier today, uh, earlier in my talk. Um, these are the primary partners. We also do get funding from a variety of others as well. Um, Claire, you want to take on from here? Yeah, thanks, Russ. So when we talk about our goal of providing fast and reliable um, information about, um, about trails in Vermont and New Hampshire, um, we're looking to create a system that provides equitable access to this information, um, whether it's someone in Vermont or New Hampshire, whether it's someone visiting, um, that they can find this information, that it's easy to understand how to use the site, and that we, and that this information on the site is reliable. We've created an entire system and design to meet those needs. And that has really um, directed our choices in a lot of ways from website design to what we do with the spatial data to how we present it on the site. Um, the first thing to note is that our requirements for a trail to be on Trail Finder are that there has to be public access. And that is critical for both users and for the trail managers that we're talking to about adding trails to the site. And we can put trails that require a fee. You know, there's many trails from many of the state parks to, you know, a Nordic center for skiing that require a fee, but they still have guaranteed public access. And that's the top most important thing um, for adding a trail to the site. So once we find the trails, can you do one more slide? forward, um, a trail that we would like to add, we, we talk to the trail manager. So sometimes because the site's been around long enough, a trail manager contacts us and says, can we add a trail to the site? Um, and then sometimes it's us hearing about a trail, um, knowing about it through our partnerships across both states, um, adding a public trail. Um, like a new trail in a state park or a state forest, all of those ways of adding a trail. Um, we first gain permission from whoever is in charge of managing that trail. Um, we say, can we do this? Can we, can we add the information? We then gather what information we need. And this is not just spatial data. I know this is a group that is focused a lot on spatial data, um, but it's really important to provide multiple 
forms of information because we want this to be equitable and we want people to be able to find the information, whether they're good at reading a map, whether they're not good at reading a map, whether they need visual information, whether they cannot um, see visual information. So um, we focus on the spatial data on both lines and points, um, and then text information and photos. We gather all of that together. We have a form that either we fill out um, with information available online already, because a lot of our um, trail management partners have put information out already, or they give us the information um, it, like word for word and we transfer it to the site. We then send that posting back to the trail manager for review. Um, we need a, an approval of that draft posting before we then go live with the posting. So then it goes live to the site. Um, and our guarantee is if there are changes, if there are updates, if there's a reason for the, the trail posting to be removed, we will do that. We will do um, whatever we need to do to get the right information out to the public about that trail. Um, we have a lot of ways of that we'll get into the details of how we can get new information out there um, later in the, in the talk, but that is our general process. And um, we work with all sorts of trail managers from like very highly skilled professionals at the state and national level, federal level, to you know, volunteers who work with their town conservation commission to add trails. Um, the data we get is has there's a wide variety that we standardize to our um, site's needs, um, and that takes you know a, from a basic to a, a quite a lot of work to you know. Um, do the topology and get the data in, into a quality that we use for the site. And so that is another thing that we do with trail managers is that we will always share the data back with them once we clean it up for them. So um, it's a service that we also provide through um, what we need to do for the site. Uh, Claire, I'm just gonna go back to the previous page for one second. Sure. Um, so if, uh, if you haven't been to Trail Finder or if you have uh, and you navigate to the search page, this is what you see. Um, we've designed this, uh, well, the first thing I wanna mention is Claire said sometimes we know which trails we want to get on here. Um, and sometimes we then respond to uh, different um, trail managers that wanna get their trails onto the site. Um, oftentimes we'll look at our map and we'll see where we call holes um, uh, where there's where there's not data there we we're actually having a conversation the other day that um, sort of the human powered recreation um, there is so much out there that people don't know about most of our states in our region can say we have XYZ miles of snowmobile trails or XYZ miles of ATV and off-road trails and XYZ miles of backcountry and gravel road rides and so on and so forth we have 845 trails and trail systems in Trail Finder. We know that that's not all of them. Um, we don't, I don't think anyone on this call could probably, well, maybe if we got all of our brains together, we can come up with a number of how many um, human powered recreation uh, trails there are in Vermont. Um, but oftentimes we're looking uh, and we see a hole in the map and then we try and see what is there on the ground and then we do outreach to those uh, trail managers. On the right side of the page, uh, is our search functionality. And I was mentioning before that if you go and you drop, you know, you you drop down the trail activities um, search bar, you could search for a variety of different things. We also put in difficulty levels. Uh, we have some popular searches that we've sort of curated the content for. Um, but what this really means is that you can search for a hiking trail that is medium level, uh, that is within 20 miles of my town, that has a waterfall and you could put waterfall in the search, uh, in the keyword search and um, up will come the trails that are closest to you. So there's quite a robust uh, uh, sort of um, search functionality feature that we've built in specifically to Trail Finder. We'll talk a little bit more about that um, as we move on. So there's a variety of different types of information as Claire mentioned before that we're trying to, prov to provide folks. Um, 
one of the most important things that my organization, which is a, a sort of a, a um, we advocate for the maintenance, use, and development of trails. We really want to get people out using trails. Uh, one of the things we've learned is that um, people oftentimes, or most of the time, when say, what's your limiting factor? What's your barrier for getting outside to recreate? They say, um, I don't have the correct information. I don't have the access to the correct information. And I don't know where the trailhead is. So um, for each uh, trail page that we developed uh, that Claire mentioned before, um, there is a variety of things, everything from quick facts, which is um, uh, sort of a little box that pops up. It's sort of, it looks like this top part of, of it. Um, it shows you basic information, the trail activities, length, difficulty, town, so on and so forth. And then we get into much, um, uh, into much more uh, detailed information, uh, textual descriptions and other information that is provided by the trail manager. Um, each trail page lists the trail manager itself. There is the trail map, which is over here. And then there are different ways that you could toggle information on and off. So for example, um, if there's a trail network that has multiple uses on different trails, you can actually use the search functionality here to toggle different segments of the trail system on and off to show where you can either bike or hike um, or snowshoe or cross country ski or whatever it may be. Also, when you go to a trail map section, the uh, trail is highlighted in uh, a green color. And if there's multiple segments, we have um, set this system up so that you can actually click on each segment and learn detailed information about that segment, including uh, usually trail name, distance, um, and average grade, which then can help the users. Um, we also uh, have, like I mentioned before, directions to the trailhead. We have a comment section so that um, although this is a free site, you don't have to have any kind of login information for it. If you'd like to get more engaged with the site, um, share your information, um, catalog, uh, log different trails that you may have been using, um, and you can also leave comments and post photos. There's another component that we launched. Um, we had been considering launching it for a while, but we thought that uh, doing it during COVID was actually a good idea was um, trail site services, which is an opportunity to connect businesses, local businesses that provide some service to the recreation community with trails in that area. So that um, a user who is on this greenway, which is in Lebanon, New Hampshire, can figure out where the bike shop is, um, uh, where the ice cream shop is, where the brew pub is, and so on and so forth. Uh, Claire mentioned before that we, um, we do both lines and points. And one of the nice things about our site is that we provide an opportunity for the user to download those lines and points um, either in KML or GPX files so they can use them either on their smartphone or on their GPS units or whatever it is. So as you can see, we've created um, a lot of um, opportunity to share uh, pretty detailed information. Um, Claire, I'm not, I don't recall if you added this into a later part of the uh, presentation, but there's also an opportunity for trail managers to post alerts um, within their pages. So that let's say that there's a town forest where there is a logging operation on one portion of uh, the trail system. Um, we can actually alert the user that a certain section of a trail is closed or maybe a bridge is being replaced or conditions are poor. Or in the past, we've alerted users to uh, a local bear den or a bee's nest uh, just to keep the um, the users aware of what is going on in those um, different locations. So with all this information that we're collecting from trail managers and putting a lot of effort into getting the best information that we can and the most up-to-date information we can, people need to be able to find it. And we have worked with a company out of Maine called Aptuitive to use their platform, which is called Branch CMS, um, to create Trail Finder as well as other Trail Finders across the country. And it is built so it can be found by people searching for trails. There's a lot of ways that this works within the website design, but also our system of working with trail managers actually really helps this because one of the ways to boost your um, search engine optimization is 
by having reliable links um, at partner websites, both to and from. And so .gov websites and .edu websites are really great um, for that. And our partnerships with um, both states, um, particularly Vermont has been super helpful and a wonderful partner um, for, for getting those links on the sites that then boost our search engine optimization. Because as I think many of you probably know, um, there are a lot of trails websites out there and most of them are bigger than Trail Finder. Um, they're national level websites um, that are gonna have um, a higher ability to create all of those links and optimize um, their sites for Google. And so all of our local partnerships can really help um, add to um, our ability for people to find us. Um, that is why, um, that's kind of how our, the website works um, because we have these partners and they, we know that how important they are to us. And um, I just added a quick uh, glance at our Google Analytics and you can see uh, what happened during the pandemic. Um, um, but also, as Russ mentioned, we relaunched our much better designed site right before uh, lockdown in, in spring of 2020. It was actually almost exactly two years ago. And yep. um, you can see that the, the use really exploded, um, just like use on trails exploded because that's where people could go um, during that time, but that our use has remained quite, quite high. Um, and that has a lot to do with the design that we've been talking about, but it also has to do with all of our trail management partners um, helping boost the use and recommending people to use Trail Finder. So this gets into um, what a little bit of what Russ was talking about with the alerts. And so, as we think about what I just mentioned about trail use really skyrocketing during the pandemic, um, but also before, <laughs> um, use of outdoor recreation has been growing um, for the last 20 years at least. And we believe at Trail Finder that information can be and should be the first step of trail management, of public use, man or public use management of trails. And so we want to create a system in which trail managers can use our platform for that trail management. And of course, the first thing that we do is we work with trail managers, right? So we get the information they want the public to know. So of course, there's the basic information about what is this trail like? What are the features that are interesting about this trail? But then there's the trail use guidelines. When is the trail open? Um, what, can you camp there? Can you not camp there? Can you have fires? Can you not have fires? That sort of thing. And then finally, there's the very specific um, messages that the, the trail management organization wants to get out. This trail is, is there because this property is for um, wildlife. So you cannot go here in the spring during denning season, um, for example very specific information about the trail. Um, as Russ mentioned, we also do the trail alerts. Um, this is one that we put in this winter because there's a, a timber operation and we can close and close systems right at the top there. Um, and then you go to the trail alerts de um, tab for details. And we can add any, any information needed, whether it's um, information about a change in the trailhead, whether it's information um, very specific to that site like this one, or if it's a general thing, like every year there's a peregrine falcon nest that you can't go on this section of trail, that alert comes up every year automatically. The last thing is that we also added a, um, what we're kind of calling like a trail library called Trail Talk. It's in the form of a blog. Um, and it's on the website. And so if we need more detailed information, we can add it there. And that was really helpful um, with all of the co changing COVID guidelines for outdoor use. 
during um, the beginning of the pandemic. And we had longer, longer form information that is relevant across the trail systems, not just to the specific trail systems um, available there. And that those pages got a lot of use um, in 2020, particularly. Um, one of the things, as I mentioned before, about the search functionality um, is the ability for the user, the the um, you know the 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 individuals looking for trail information, um, to be able to find the right place for them to go. Um, as an example, I have two young kids. My hiking days are different than they were ten years ago before I had my kids. So perhaps. Previously, I'd be looking for a hiking trail that was in the moderate to more difficult um, area. Uh, that things, those things kind of change. So uh, 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 going back from the initial um, sort of cluster pin page that I showed you a few slides back to this more drill down area where, um, again, we're searching for a hiking trail that's in the easy category um, that's three miles, um, one to three miles long, um, that is within 10 miles of Westford, Vermont. And what comes up are six different trail options for the user to choose from. Um, if you, this was a live site, if you hover over each of these and click them once, you would see this little quick facts information about each of the places um, that then you can choose to go to. If you click on the trail name, uh, it allows the user to get to that more detailed page that was on the previous um, uh, previous slide. Again, we want people to be able to find the right trail that they want to that they want to use for the right purpose, the right time of year, and so on and so forth. But also from a management perspective, um, we don't want users to get in over their heads. We don't want someone who's not prepared to, you know, summit one of our um, you know higher, more difficult peaks. Um, to go there without having the correct information. So um, we see this as a management tool, not only for the trail manager, uh, but as a management tool for the trail user to make sure that they find the correct information uh, to get them to where they want to and need to go. Um, the last point that we wanted to talk about is one of the big conundrums of trail management um, is how to manage for high use trails. There's so much information out on in the online world about the best hikes in Vermont. And, you know, Mount Mansfield's going to be at the top of most of them, right? Because it's a beautiful mountain ridge. There's multiple ways to get up it. And it you get views of the entire northern half of Vermont like how can you go wrong until you get to the top and it looks like a New Jersey beach right that might not be what people are expecting and so we don't say that we are the answer to to managing for high use trails there's so much on the ground management that trail managers need need to um, implement in order to make these places uh, safe for the public and safe for the um, ecological system that they're part of. Um, the, but the reason that I wanted to mention this um, is that we acknowledge that when you say, when we say that we're putting equitable, easy to use access, easy to access information out on the web, that some people will say, well, you're just bringing more people to our trails. And although people will find trails. We do, as we've mentioned, want to get the right information so they find the right trail. Um, we also have, you'll see, as you see on our find trails page, the same um, icon dot for the Mount Mansfield trails as for, you know, a, a small trail system. We're, we're not ranking trails. We're not making it so people can, you know, find the most popular trails we want people to find that right trail. And sometimes it's not the most popular trail and sometimes it is. And if it is, we wanna get that information out to people that you may encounter crowds at the top of this mountain. And we have specific high use messaging that we've used on our most popular um, site, 
postings, trail postings um, that say, this is a high use trail. Here is what you should expect if you go here. Like I said, this is just a small component um, of our work in trying to help trail managers. And we know that sometimes trail managers might have to close things down and we will also help with that. Um, but we are trying to make sure that people, I think our first goal is to make sure that people know what to expect um, when they're gonna go on a trail. When you, you just see something really pretty like a sunset from Stowe Pinnacle on Instagram, um, you might want to know that, you know, that's one of the most popular trails in Vermont. Um, so that is part of our work. It's a big challenge, I think, for everyone in trail management. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention, I forgot to mention, is that most people who use trails don't know what a trail manager is. And so one of our goals is to connect those people to the trail managers. And that's why we prominently display the trail manager on every single trail posting. And we direct people who um, send us inquiries about trails to those trail managers. We direct people to giving donations to the trail managers, um, becoming members of the trail management organization, um, all on that front page of each trail posting. Um, with that, um, Tim mentioned like, where are we going with Trail Finder? <laughs> um, we are adding more trails um, all the time. We are working on the trail side services component that Russ mentioned. Um, and we're working also with sharing the trails. We always share the trails data back um, with the state and um, working on making Trail Finder an even more comprehensive um, database of trails, of all trails in Vermont and New Hampshire. <clears throat> and to just to jump on one, one more thing, um, the, there are many more uses to Trail Finder as a, as a management tool that we're just scratching the surface on. As an example, um, in our work with Vermont Forest Parks and Recreation, some of the more popular uh, parking areas and trailheads have trail counters. Um, working with um, some of the state land managers, we've looked at that data and looked for correlations between um, when the highest use at the trails at at the trail on the ground is, and when the high if there is a correlation of higher. Uh, click through use on trail finder. So then we could start to look at if we know, you know, that uh, people are going to plan to hike Mount Mansfield as the example as Claire was using before. Um, maybe they're clicking the, the, the trail finder website the day before. So we can actually start to track usage. Um, it's not as sophisticated as we'd like yet. And there aren't as many trail counters on the ground, uh, but that's a use that we see in this. Another example is a project that I'm uh, the Trails Alliance is working on with the Upper Valley Lake Sunapee Regional Planning Commission to look at trails in Sullivan County um, and um, look at what is not currently being promoted as a recreational opportunity. Sullivan County is one of these um, counties in New Hampshire that is sort of in between the other more popular counties uh, and the county wants to help make an investment to make it a I don't want to say a huge recreation destination, um, but sort of put it on the map as a place where people can go and recreate and connect those businesses and so on and so forth. And we're using the information that's currently in Trail Finder and then going to look at Trail Finder usage and then going to look for the gaps, as I mentioned before, or the holes in of what's not there and then talk to those landowners and trail managers to try and post those um, uh, trails onto Trail Finder. So we really see our site. Um, as uh, as a pretty comprehensive thing. And like I said before, by no means does it have every trail that's in Vermont, New Hampshire, but from our understanding and our research, it is the most comprehensive place that any one user can go to get the information that they want to go and recreate. And the capacity um, is, is there for us to continue to add those trails. And I wanna mention one other thing before we open it up to questions, which is with regards to high use trails, as Claire was mentioning before, 
there's always a concern from a trail manager that if they put their trails on trail finder, they're going to be overrun by people. Um, our experience is that the popular trailheads are already popular. So by using the alert functions and the high use, fun the high use alerts, um, it's actually uh, encouraging people to spread the use out to their more local trail networks. And as trail managers would say, um, an unused trail is a management nightmare. So a lot of those small local trails that are down the road from you that you may not know is there or the town next door that you didn't know there was a trail network in the town forest, we want to get those used because we want to disperse the use and we want to make sure that, you know, not everyone who's hiking is going to the high peaks in the greens or the 4,000 footers in New Hampshire. Um, most people are going out their door and trying to squeeze in a run or a ski or a hike before or after work. Um, and that's also another great use for trail finder. Great. So thanks, Claire. Thanks, Russ, for giving us that overview. And I made an error when I had originally sent this meeting out, and I think I slated it from 9.30 to 10, but we do actually have till 10.30. So my apologies for that. So now it's an open conversation and question and answer period. Uh, I will moderate. So folks, if you have questions you'd like Russ and Claire to take on, either uh, raise your virtual hand or use the chat box. And there are already some in the chat box. Uh, first, Eric Engstrom, our, our colleague at ANRGIS a while back asked, asked about mobile use of this information, whether you intend to take that on in the future, if it will be a standalone app, if it will be responsive web design based, how are you thinking about mobile in the field use of this information? So currently, our use is about 60% mobile, 40% desktop. We have designed a mobile friendly website um, and we definitely see a lot of use. As I said, well, the majority of our use is coming from smartphones. Um, in terms of the app, thus far, we have not invested in the app. We've invested in everything that we just talked about, which um, as you can imagine, has actually like quite a lot of investment um, because of these processes that we laid out. Um, unlike some of the crowdsource websites that are getting this information for free, even if it's not very good information, um, we are not. <laughs> and so that has taken, you know, our, that has um, taken precedence over an app. Um, there's lots of issues technologically with building an app and how it works with the website and we would want to make a really good app um, all, all that to say this has not been in the cards for us so far but we have been considering how to do this and finding enough funding to to make the app um, it's definitely on our minds my preference as a smartphone user is for mobile friendly websites but i know that some people really like the apps and so um, we've been investigating and researching um, how we how we could do that. And and to add one other thing, which is um, obviously we all know we've been to trails where you have no cell service. Um, because we allow for the download of the trails and points that are in Trail Finder, um, there are lots of apps on your phone that can read those lines and points or Google Earth and so on and so forth. So I've used it that way in the field. Um, it's not always perfect, but it does work quite well. Uh, and if you plan ahead, it can even work quite well when you don't have service. So I'm going to try and condense a couple related questions in the chat box, one of which is pertaining to um, how you share information or relate information with us at the state of Vermont related to new and or change trail uh, information as well as the emergency use of this information. For example, our E911 maintained statewide trails database is primarily an emergency rescue, need to find someone lost or injured, far away from people um, uh, use case. How do you think that this information relates with um, that statewide data set and how do you share information and how would you better like to share information across uh, those uses? So our, it, from the beginning of Trail Finder, or at least since the redesign of the site um, in 2013, um, as Russ mentioned, the data is downloadable. 
um, by anyone. And so we have, as part of posting on Trail Finder, trail managers understand because we tell them that like their trail data will be shared um, with the public that by sharing on Trail Finder, the trail data becomes public. And so we then share it back with BCGI. In the past, it's been a yearly data dump. Um, whether we do that differently, that we can certainly discuss that. Um, but like I said, it's it's a pretty easy, easy thing for us because from the beginning, we've been complete public access, um, whether it's used for emergency purposes or for whatever purposes other people um, might use it for. Um, we, of course, we say that it's, you know, like if you're downloading from Trail Finder, it's for your personal use, but trail data now is like very easy to get and very easy to find. And um, so getting the best data out there is generally our our practice and our goal. So we have a number of questions related to that, uh, to other of the numerous offerings of trail information. So yeah. whether it's all trails, trail forks, and how are you working around the authoritativeness question and convincing your trail manager network to use yours either solely or in addition to those other platforms? Yeah, I never would say that we would say that we have to be the sole source of information. Um, the value of Trail Finder for Vermont and New Hampshire is that we have all of the trails, um, that we have motorized trails, we have non-motorized trails, we have um, hiking trails, we have biking trails. Um, but in doing that, um, we don't give some of the information specific user groups are looking for. So Trail Forks, for example, is really great with the exact information mountain bikers are looking for. Um, in my opinion, it may not give the information that hikers are looking for, even though hikers do use that site. So we are not a replacement for Trail Forks because they have a niche that we don't fill. We are more of a um, kind of, well, our goal is to, find people who want to go outside, show them the breadth of opportunity and give them really good information about it. And if they need more specific information to go to um, that trail manager website, and then that trail manager can send them to trail forks if they want or, um, or elsewhere. In terms of, you know, the really big <laughs> trails websites, like all trails, like I mentioned, it's a national website, um, REI, sponsored um, the outdoor project websites and those are depending on the use getting more popular um, and I think our our uh, message with that is that we hear from trail managers very regularly that all trails is really hard to work with and posts trails that are not public access um, are closed, are problematic trails. And so, you know, when we say like our trails are trail manager improved, we hope that means something to users and users make the choice to use Trail Finder rather than those other trails um, and uh, other websites. But, you know, we're, these are websites that are coming out of Silicon Valley and have significantly more funding than, than we do. Um, so I don't know if like at a like national level, like we're a competitor to them, but for local people, I think we can be because of our partnerships across Vermont and New Hampshire. So it wouldn't be a GIS led conversation if there weren't a question about metadata like in, in classification type things. So um, how are you going about describing trails as either handicap accessible? How do you develop gradations of easy, moderate, difficult, those kinds of things? And moreover, when do you decide what certain features are useful for your audience and which ones are not because they're either offered elsewhere 
like achievements, like a Strava type thing or, or other social oriented act ways of engaging with this information. So how are you classifying the information and as well as how are you deciding about what functionality and features are, are built on top of that? Um, Russ, should I take the first and you can take the second? Sure. So um, the handicapped accessible uh, project is a conundrum um, because there's so many variables from uh, what a person with a disability or who needs a um, more accessible trail, what they actually need, that the individual needs, um, what the standards are, which um, I don't know how much you guys know about ADA trail standards, but they're kind of all over the place. There's a little bit more movement towards standardization, um, but it's really tricky because of multiple choices that you can make. <laughs> um, and that's generally seen as like the forest service standards are seen as like pretty good, but there's still some problems with it. Um, and so there's there's a lot of opinions about <laughs> how to how to give, how to provide information um, about universal access trails as well as about trails in general so people can make the right choice for them. And so we've put a lot of thought into um, that and we are still in the process of, of working on making our trails information more accessible. What we do right now, we have a, a page on the website that describes this, is that if a trail manager reports to us that it is universal access, we will say that it's universal access on, on our site. We know that conditions can change, trail maintenance can change. So that checkbox isn't us saying this is, you, you don't have to do more research. The reason that we need a checkbox is so people can filter because the, we can't expect people to look through 845 trails on our main website. There's over a thousand trails and say, does this one sound like it's accessible? Does this one sound like it's accessible? That's just not fair. With the trails that are accessible, we also report the surface type, the width, um, any potential barriers that there might be on that in that place. We report um, accessible parking, accessible toilets, accessible park, picnic areas, accessible platforms. Um, there's, so there's more detail in all of those postings that we than, than we do for our average posting. Our next steps are to get that level of detail into other postings that may not be universal access, but may be accessible to certain people who use a wheelchair to certain people who have um, a visual impairment, any of those other things that maybe they don't need universal access, but they need to know if there's a four foot drop 10 feet into the trail and then it's really good or not. And so that's our next step for that. Um, in terms of going beyond just our accessibility guidelines, um, we generally rely on on trail managers to give us how they describe their trails in terms of easy, moderate, strenuous, and advanced. Um, we And then we kind of check them. <laughs> we say, and that's happened with our uh, trail work, trail posting development in like the White Mountains. A trail that's moderate for the White Mountains is not moderate for the seacoast of New Hampshire. And so we need to make it a little bit more universal. So then we have a discussion about what that should actually be. Um, and that's also why <laughs> we need the different types of information. Um, just having the, the trail difficulty in the quick facts isn't enough. We need to describe what that means in the trail descriptions, um, the text description as well. <clears throat> And for the second half of your question with regards to, um, uh, you know, uh, make a, how do we choose what what features we're 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 promoting within those 
uh, trail pages and then sort of the social the social component of the site. Um, again, we typically rely on our trail managers um, to give us the highlights of um, uh, and, the, and the features and the points of interest that are on those trails. Um, sometimes we actually know them. Um, sometimes in areas that there's no spatial data, we're actually going out and collecting the information ourselves, which then we're relying on ourselves, which then of course the trail manager approves based on the process that Claire described before. So um, it's sort of an organic process in terms of um, um, the robustness of features that may be on any uh, different trail trail page. And if any of the folks that are on this call right now go and look, you'll see that um, while we require a minimum amount of information, sometimes there's a lot more information. And that's fine that we like it when trail managers take it upon themselves to um, uh, to put a lot of information um, and a lot of thought into what the user wants. There are also other times, as Claire said before, where if you want more specific information um, or let's say you're you're hiking um, um, the long trail. Um, the, the trail finder page for the long trail is not a replacement for the long trail guidebook. Um, so the trail manager has made it, uh, you know, GMC has made it very obvious on the, on some of our pages, same thing for the AT, um, and for the catamount trail, any of these long, longer distance trails that, um, trail finder is the entry point, but not the end all be all. So we also work with trail managers to do that. With regards to the social component, I mentioned earlier that you can just go to the site and cruise around and get all the information you want. If you choose to create an account, a login account, it gives you access to a variety of different other things. Um, you can then submit comments and photos uh, that get added to the photo roll. Um, and you can also, um, sometimes you can geotag the photos so that they can um, pop up uh, um, uh, on the trail page itself. And then there's a, um, a way where you can catalog or log your different trail finder trail use. And then there are badges that are associated with those. So if you, um, uh, you know, if you're a uh, log 10 foliage hikes, you're a, you're a, you got your leaf peeper badge. And if you um, hike the equivalent of a mile, you get your, I mean, sorry, a, mar a 26 miles, you get your marathon badge. So there are ways that we've been trying to build in the social component. It's not really as robust as Strava where you're competing against other folks, um, but there are users who do catalog or, or log their trail use, um, tag their favorites, share their favorites with other users. Um, so that um, so those fun that functionality is sort of embedded, um, but slightly on a, um, a level beyond the initial search page. Well, again, thank you both, uh, Russ and, and Claire. Um, I should ask the two of you, and you, we're coming up on the hour here, do you have any questions for us, seeing that you have a sort of GIS hive here <laughs> on behalf of the state of Vermont? Anything you want to ask us about uh, these kinds of things before we close? I don't have anything on sort of the technical side. I would just say that um, we're we're always happy. Um, it was funny when when Tim asked um, wh what we want to talk about. Claire and I said we we could talk about Trail Finder for for days on end. So we hope that we gave you guys the information that's that's helpful. Um, and um, you know, as you're cruising around the site, and hopefully you'll use it either personally or professionally. Um, uh, if you have any feedback for us or any ideas or thoughts, we, we'd love to hear it. Um, um, and if you know of if you see any trails, uh, if you know of any trails that you hike regularly that are not on Trail Finder, and you can connect us to those trail managers, that's huge. Because another another thing that's been a challenge during COVID, um, we all know that face to face meetings is how you build trust, and a lot of the success of our Trail Finder website is built on a trusting relationship between our coalition and the trail managers themselves. During COVID, it's a lot more difficult. You can't, you know, meet a trail manager at a trailhead and go hike a trail together and make a plan to put it up. We're, we're doing it through email and some Zoom calls and so on and so forth. So if you know of any trail managers that you think would want to have their trails put on Trail Finder, um, let us know. Uh, right now, uh, based on the geography, we have funding for some locations and not funding for others. That's another thing that's important is that we don't we don't charge the trail managers to post this information. So um, uh, now is a good time, uh, especially before we get into the maintenance season itself, come spring and mud season, that we can actually work on trail posting. So we would uh, invite any feedback from your team um, and uh, connections to any trail managers so we can get more trails onto Trail Finder. 
Very good. And we've all been tasked. So thank you, Russ. <laughs> Thanks, Claire. And thank you all for joining us this Wednesday morning. Again, this is part of our usually monthly geo enlightenment series on behalf of the state of Vermont's GIS crew, uh, the Enterprise GIS Consortium. So hopefully we'll be back with more of these and uh, you know where to find uh, Claire and Russ's information and trailfinder.info. Hopefully it's useful to you all. So have a good day, everyone. Thanks again. Thank you all. Have a great day. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Yep.